in this or in uh, today we will do this for this 6.5 i will do examples let's say for example i take number i take number four express as sum of difference express as sum or difference that's cosine 2t cosine 6t then I use formula for one as I remember that will be one half times cosine sum plus cosine difference. Which will be one half times cosine eight p plus cosine negative four t. And I will just repeat the one half. At the same time, cosine negative is cosine positive, right? So I will just uh, change it at the same time, okay? So that's one half cosine 4t. Okay, so I hope it's not too hard, especially if you memorize the formula, that will be great. If you don't memorize the formula, don't worry. During the test or the final, I will give you this uh, the formulas at the back of the test, okay? Yeah, even though I know you may uh, just looking at your uh, your book though. Uh, that's for number four. Let's see number six. Number six. Again, it is expressed as sum or difference for two sine for two sine seven theta sine five theta according to our formula for two uh, sine times sine is negative one half of uh, cosine sum minus cosine difference. Okay, which is uh, negative of cosine 12 theta minus cosine 2 theta. Well, to distribute, I will distribute the negative. Basically, I will reverse the order of subtraction. Then I get cosine 2 theta minus cosine 4 theta. Okay. Uh, group 4, especially important when you later on take calculus 2, especially. Okay. But of course, uh, for now, it will be just for your test purpose. Okay. Another one, maybe more, of course. Uh, for example, let's do number hmm, number ten. This one is expressed as product. As a product, number ten. Uh, sine 2 theta minus sine 8 theta. Sine minus sine. I think that's group 5, number 4. As I remember, sine minus sine is 2 times cosine of half of the sum. times half of the difference, times sine of half of the 
the friends. So this is two or sine ten divided by two that's five and then sine that's negative six divided by two that's negative three sine. Okay. Okay. But yeah, we can simplify a bit further with this negative here. Okay, I will pull it out because uh, sine is an odd function. So negative two, uh, cosine, uh, cosine five theta, sine three theta. Okay, let me give you one minute, one or two minutes. Uh, yeah, two minutes. Uh, try number sixteen. Number sixteen. So sine express express as product still sine a t plus sine two t. Okay, you try it, please. Yeah, take a look in your book. What's the formula for sine plus sine? A, this is equals to, I believe we use formula 5, 3. Uh, you, again, you don't need to write this 5, 3, 5, 4, 4, 2, 4, 1. No, no, don't worry about it. Uh, but in case somebody asks me which formula you use, Thomas, then you look back to my list. Let me show you the list I have last time. Uh, to my list, the one here. This is group four, one, two, three, four. And then this is group five, one, two, three, four. Okay, that's what I meant. That's from our uh, 6.5a uh, on Monday. Okay, now suppose you do it that way, then this will be two times what? Sine. Sine eight t plus two t over two. That's right. And then cosine eight t minus two t over two. Eight t minus two t over two. Good. Thank you. And then this will be two times sine five t or sine three t. <clears throat> Okay, now that's for number 16. Let's go on further, more problems. On your weak point, what is your weak point? Prove it. Number 18. That might just be my weak point. I don't know about the rest of the class. Uh, repeat again. That might just be my weak point. I don't know about the rest of the class. <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> I understand you, but I see all the tests. <laughs> <laughs> so no, it's not only you. <laughs> okay, In fact, good. you are you are you are actually on the, the on the stronger side. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, it's everybody's weak point. But when I say that uh, is your weak point, I was actually referring to myself too, because uh, again, when I learn it myself, yeah, uh, it's it's kind of like imagine if you need to do proofing at the same time, you don't really memorize the formula. You know, so. Uh, it's kind of like you need to do two things at once and that makes it even more difficult okay so if you memorize the formulas it be a bit easier but still when it comes to proofing mm, hard to say you know i just i just thought proofs were going to be done after geometry uh actually uh, in our geometry class <laughs> we have proofing and it keeps on coming <laughs> <laughs> you will keep on coming yeah Uh, we will have, in fact, if you are going to physics or math, electrical engineering, your uh, your 300 level, 400 level, most of them actually proofing. Most of them. Yeah. So uh, the thing is when I carry my class, I focus more on computation first. And 
students from my class, especially from my Kakru school class, have tend to have the weakness of not doing well when it comes to proof. Yeah, but the thing is in my Kakru, in Kakru school, the material is so much such that uh, if I want to teach them how to prove, uh, I, I won't be able to finish the material well, you know. Uh, I mean, with the time I, I'm given, only 15 weeks, there's only so much I can do for them. You know, so be aware with the weakness of my class. Okay, students in my class tend to be weak on the proofing, which I know a lot of instructors at, uh, Kakru's instructors at uh, Santa Monica actually would like you to have good proofing. I know, for example, uh, uh, Mr. Dr. Andrew, uh, Dr. Andrew Nessler, and then uh, Mr. Alan Hong, and some other instructors, uh, William Konya, I guess, Soleimani. I mean, that's supposed to be like that, though, supposed to be more proof uh, in Kakus. But again, if I were told to choose, especially if my students coming in with a very weak proof background, uh, I, I just don't want to spend my time on proofing in a way that it cuts my time away for the material I supposed to cover, you know. Uh, so that's that's my weakness. That's the weakness from my class. Okay. Well, anyway, come back here. Uh, I will prove from left to right, left hand side. Remember, when you do proofing, your your step one is your one point. I need you to show me this. I need you to show me this. Okay. I need you to show me this. If you start from left hand side, then you first show the direction and then left hand side and whatever expression you have on the left hand side. Okay. I know some students actually prove it this way. So let's say this is left hand side equals to right hand side. And that person proved from the left hand side kind of like simplify and then later on from the right hand side simplify and they end up being equal later on. Now that technique of proofing is uh, even though it is acceptable in our book, I don't accept that for now. Okay, for now I don't accept that. I want you to move from one side to the other side. Okay, I want you to move from one side to the other side. Uh, what's my reason? Uh, how to explain it? Because there are some there are some procedure that uh, when you do it this way, you may end up with a, a wrong conclusion. Uh, that's why uh, not only me, I know some other instructors actually do not accept this style of proofing. Okay, the one we accept is only from left hand side to right hand side, or right hand side to left hand side. Okay, yeah. That's that's uh, that's for me. If you go to another level and you see the teacher kind of like do it from both sides, uh, meeting together somewhere in between, then feel free to do that. It it tends to be on the easier side, I know, but uh, there are some steps may not be legitimate if you do that kind of uh, proofing. Okay. Now, well, anyway, uh, this one is what makes this proofing becomes harder is the following. Notice that I believe you, some of you, not all, some of you may not remember the formula for this and the formula for this. Now, the thing is, if you don't remember the formula, very likely you don't even know you need to use that formula. Because if you remember the formula, okay, at least kind of like vaguely, oh, you know what, we have a formula for this. This is group uh, five, for example, right? Uh, you can just look at the book or you open the look at the notes, right? Or look at the back of your test if, because I will give you the, the formula. But if you don't memorize the formula, uh, very likely you don't even know what to do. So not even the first step is, is doable for you. Okay, that's why I would like you to try, at least try to memorize those formula. Okay, now, uh, another problem is that uh, we have a tendency to do factoring right away. And we see here, oh, nothing we can factor. So I, I have seen people doing this. They factor sine theta, and this is one plus three. And on the denominator, 
is cosine theta and this is one plus three and then cancel that's equal to tangent theta you know but no 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 this is this is a very wrong way to do it okay there's a very wrong way to do it now uh, we will use formula from group five i believe this is group five three and this is group five one okay so that will be the two sine half of sum times cosine half of difference And on the denominator, there will be two times uh, cosine half of sum times cosine half of difference. Let me simplify it first. Get okay, two sine two theta cosine negative theta over two cosine two theta cosine negative theta now and then you see something cancelled right the two cancels and the cosine negative theta cancels so i get sine two theta over cosine theta which is equals to tangent two theta. That's our right hand side. And that's the end of the proof. Okay. <clears throat> Now, let me challenge you with a hard one. So I did the easy one. I want you to do the hard one. Thank you, Thomas. Number 24. No, it's actually not too hard. Uh, proof. Proof. Cosine T. Plus cosine four t plus cosine seven t over sine t plus sine four t plus sine seven t equals to cotangent four t. Now, but before you start, uh, let me tell you, of course, we will start from the left-hand side, right? We'll do from left-hand side equals to whatever that is. But before you go on, I want to realize that we want to have cotangent 4t. We want to have cotangent 4t. Now, what makes this question a bit more difficult is that we actually have the following choice. Take a look here. Don't do anything yet. You may think you want to combine these two. But when you combine these two, you will get uh, half of 5t and half of 3t. Okay. Uh, which is not what we want. We want something with 4t. So I suggest you to combine the cosine t with the 7t instead. Okay? And leave that cosine 4t alone. So these are the ones you combine. These are the ones you combine. Okay? Yeah. At least we have better hope because then uh, cosine t plus cosine 7t, uh, one of the term will be cosine half of sum which is 4t. That's what we want, right? Okay, now let me ask you to try. I'll give you three minutes. So 
let me write that code cosine 4t first. Now, then when you combine the yellows, what do you get? That will be 2 cosine half of sum half of difference cosine of half of difference right and then on the denominator let me write that sign for t first plus whatever the product for that sum, which is, I believe, sine plus sine is two, sine of half of sum, or sine half of difference. Let me simplify. I get cosine 4t plus 2 cosine 4t cosine negative 3t, That's right? And then down here we have sine 4t plus 2 sine 4t cosine 3t negative three t. I hope you get that one. Now, what's the next step? Uh, if you want, you can simplify this first, the cosine negative is uh, cosine positive, right? Okay, so let me do that cosine 4t plus 2 cosine 4t cosine 3t sine 4t plus 2 sine 4t cosine 3t. Okay, now you will see this last step is actually not necessary, but I do it anyway for cosmetic purpose. Okay. I mean, so sometimes, actually most of the times, simply because the expression look nice, uh, we have less pressure in moving forward, right? And the next step, I think is the most crucial step is factoring because we have common factor on the top, we have common factor cosine 4t and on the denominator we have common factor sine 4t. Okay, so I will take that cosine 4t out and I get 1 plus 2 cosine 3t. On the denominator I have common factor sine 4t, I take that out. Okay, and then I get 1 plus 2 cosine 3t. Now notice that the group happens to be the common factor, right? So that's the one I cancel. I get cosine 4t over sine 4t. That's cotangent 4t. That's what we want to have. After proofing, uh, one more thing to do is on solving equation number 34. Solve for all radian solution. Sign 
three five x minus sine x equal to two cosine three x. Now I will use uh, formula five four on the left hand side. Okay, sine minus sine is two times cosine half of sum times sine half of different. Okay, so I get two cosine three x sine two x equals to two cosine two x. Do not divide by cosine three x. Don't divide by cosine three x. You, if you want to reduce by two, divide by two. Yes, because two cannot be zero. But cosine three x may be zero. So don't divide by cosine three x. Okay. Now instead, uh, let me do it properly. I move to the other side and then do factoring. Okay. So I set one side equals zero. Then I factor that way then I can use zero product, uh, zero product theorem. Sine two x minus one equals zero. So cosine three x equals to zero, or cosine two x equals to one. <clears throat> now three x equals to zero when cosine three x equals to zero when x equals to. I mean three x equals to pi over two plus 2 pi k, 3x equals to 3 pi over 2 plus 2 pi k. Is it right? Now, uh, I, I want to condense them. I want to condense them, but let me show you this first. 3 pi over, two, uh, pi over 2's positions here while 3 pi over 2's position is here. Okay, so uh, I can combine both of these. I can combine both of that, uh, condense them, becomes, becomes 3x equals to pi over 2 plus pi k. Now I hope you see the difference. It's 2 pi, 2 pi, all of a sudden it's pi here. Okay, all of the sudden is pi there. Uh, because uh, the first one, pi over 2 plus 2 pi, pi over 2 plus 2 pi plus 2 pi plus 2 pi, you keep on getting these, right? Okay, now likewise, 3 pi over 2 plus 2 pi get the same position, same position, same position. But if I do pi over 2 plus pi, I go to this guy. Plus another pi, I get to this guy. Plus another pi, I get to this guy. Okay, so combining these two, I get this guy. Okay, now, and then I will divide by three, I get pi over six plus pi over three k. I think I'll catch with using n instead. Now for this guy here, two, uh, two, sine two x equals to one, then x, two x will be pi over two. Uh, Okay, so dividing by 2, I get pi over 4 plus pi k. Okay, so the solutions are pi over 6 plus pi over 3. K pi over four plus pi k. Okay. 
Now that's for this 6.5. Your suggested homework. I don't know if I suggest you any homework, but let me do it again. This time we can do all this uh, all problems from this section, uh, basically from number one to number 33. <coughs> But just do every other round. Just do every other round. Okay. Now that's for 6.5, finishing up from last time. I go on to 6.6. .6. In first trick functions. In first econometric function. 6.6, the inverse function. Now, let me put a note that this section, uh, it's difficult because you have to memorize. Difficult because uh, there are things, things you need to memorize. I think I prefer to say to memorize and get used to. Okay. Now I hope uh, I hope when I say it's difficult, it doesn't discourage you and saying Thomas, you just make everything difficult. No, 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 no. I, that's not what I'm trying to say. When I say this section is difficult, I'm trying to give you a heads up that if you find it to be difficult, you are normal. Okay, and I try to point out at which uh, part uh, students usually find it to be difficult. Of course, together with my own experience when I first learned this. Uh, I can tell you when I first learned this, I also have some, uh, I get confused to be more precise. I get confused at first, but after a while, uh, my teachers say the same thing. You need to memorize, you need to get used to it. Then eventually, yeah, okay, it's it's not too hard. Okay, yeah, but at the beginning, uh, it's difficult. Now, let me just go to the point why it is difficult. Here's the thing, a function, function, has uh, its inverse function if the function, let me call it fx, has inverse function f inverse x, if fx is one to one. Okay, now that's a big, uh, you can say that's a big theorem, maybe that's a big, very big rule. In fact, uh, a function has inverse function if the function is one to one, and therefore the inverse function also has to be one to one. I think, uh, I think that's one of the issues you have in your test too. In your test too, the last set of questions, uh, you can take a look, uh, plenty of students actually not doing well on that part. Uh, but when you don't do well on that part, it's usually because of the one-to-oneness requirement. Okay, it's because of the one-to-oneness requirement that you kind of like uh, overlook. Now, the problem is all trig functions, all sine, cosine, and tangent functions are not one-to-one. -one. That's the issue. That's the issue. Okay, so for cosine function, for example, give me a second. For sine or cosine function,
Thomas, did you post the answers to the last test somewhere? Oh, I think I forgot. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, remind me to do that during the break. Okay, cool. Yeah, uh huh. Uh, I'm looking for Give me a little second. Uh, for example, the graph of sine function y equals to sine x, uh, it looks like this. It looks like this. Now, clearly, it's not a one to one function. Right? That's the for sine x. And then for cosine x, for cosine x is this. Even in the first period from 0 to 2 pi, it's already not 1 to 1. Not to say that this is actually going indefinitely far, right? And this one go back indefinitely far. You see what I mean? Okay, and likewise the graph of tangent 2. It's not 1 to 1. So, uh, then... Uh, what should we do to make it one to one? Then this is the part you have to memorize. Okay, this is the part you have to memorize. Uh, to make sine function becomes one to one, uh, the convention is so. Don't don't ask me why they make it like this. Okay, that's my convention. So uh, people who live before us doing math, they are the one have the right to make that kind of decision. Okay, by convention by convention y equals to sine x is restricted to restricted to negative pi over 2 I over two such that it becomes one to one. Okay, so for sign, what they do is now suppose I uh, Suppose this is my x-axis, this is my y-axis, then uh, they actually restrict the uh, sine function to this domain. From negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Okay, now they restrict that to that domain I notice that in this uh, region, in this interval, sine becomes a one-to-one -one function. Right? Sine becomes one-to-one -one function here. Now, I usually call this, I usually call this quadrant one. I mean, yes, from zero to pi is quadrant one. But uh, instead of calling this quadrant four, I call that quadrant negative one. Okay, this is quadrant one, and I will call this quadrant negative one. Now, once we restrict the domain to uh, interval negative pi over two to 
pi over 2, then the sine becomes 1 to 1. Then we can define, we can get, obtain, we can obtain the function, the inverse function, y equals to sine inverse x. Okay, now note that, I think I need to write that note a little bit, note that sine inverse x is not the same to one over sine x. No, it's not the same, they are not the same. Okay, if you want to write one over sine inverse, uh, one over sine x using negative exponent, it is written this way. This is sine x to the power of negative one. Okay, but then it is not the same to sine inverse x. No, it's not the same. Can you follow me so far for this convention? Just for sine x, just for sine x, they will restrict the domain to negative pi over two to pi over two. Now notice that with this domain, with this domain, what is the range? The range of sine will still be from negative one to one, right? And it is a one to one function. So what happened here? When we have sine inverse, the domain for the domain of sine inverse x is the range of sine x, right? Which is negative one to one. However, the range, this is the key, the range of sine inverse x the range for sine inverse x is the domain of sine x. Now remember, the domain of sine x in general, the domain in general is all real number. That's the domain in general. But once we talk about inverse function, we will get into what we call restricted domain. That's what you have to remember. For sine x to be one to one, we restrict the domain to pi over two, negative pi over two to pi over two. Therefore, that restricted domain will be the restricted range for sine inverse two. Okay, that will be negative pi over two pi. Okay, let's do example, just to make sure that we are strong here. For example, uh, part A, what is sine inverse of one half? Uh, the way we think is, the way we think is sine what equals to one half? Uh, what we know, sine theta equals to one half when theta is pi over three or two pi over three, right? Now, but, but because this is a function, the sine inverse is a function, it is inverse function, okay? So there should be only one solution. We cannot get both, right? So we need to look at the restricted domain, which of those two is in this interval? Which of those two in this interval? Now you see that only this guy in that interval, right? So the answer here will be pi over three. What am I doing? Pi over six, my friend. I, yeah, it's pi over six. So this is pi over six by pi over six. So the answer here, only pi over six, okay? Remember the restricted domain. Remember the restricted range. 
the restriction, 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 restriction. Okay, now on coordinate system, if we look at the, I think I want to say, if we look at the uh, unit circle, We look at the unit circle. Now, the range of sine inverse is quadrant one and quadrant negative one. Okay, quadrant one and quadrant negative one. So the angle you get from sine inverse either zero to 90 degrees or negative 90 degrees to zero. Oh, by the way, you can answer this also in degrees, even though preferably in radian. Okay, so you, if you want, you can say this is equal to 30 degrees. That's also fine. Now, then, going further, how about sine inverse of negative one half? Now, the way we think will be then sine what angle equals to negative one half? We may say, oh, uh, one of them is uh, 7 pi over 6 in quadrant 3 or another one in quadrant 4, 15, uh, I'm sorry, 11 pi over 6. Right? But keep in mind that your answer is supposed to be between negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. You have to. You have to. Okay? Because that's the restriction. Right? Unfortunately, Unfortunately, both of these are not there. Both of these are not in this interval. Why? Because the restriction has to be quadrant one or quadrant negative one, right? So uh, take a look. The thing is like 11 pi over six is actually located here, right? That's actually in our, it is actually in our restriction, but wrong angle wrong angle location the same but wrong angle i need to use quadrant negative one instead okay so this 11 pi over six this 11 pi over six is the same to what angle using negative angle it's negative pi over six that's right it's negative pi over six okay so the answer here will be negative pi over six. Okay, which I actually would like to mention to you uh, something quite nice, and I believe that's another reason why our predecessor, uh, actually, uh, our older mathematician chose that restriction. Uh, it's because when it is a uh, negative here. Notice that sine function, sine function is an odd function, right? Sine function is an odd function. So what happened is when it becomes one to one, and if you happen to choose a correct, uh, a, a correct interval, then the inverse function will also becomes one to uh, becomes odd function. You see what I mean? Okay, so if you have sine inverse of negative, you can pull the negative out first. Okay, and we know sine inverse one half is pi over six. Right? I do it in two steps. I do it in two steps here. But the first step is basically something you can do mentally. Okay, something you can do mentally. Okay, let's try again. Let's try again. Suppose I have a sine inverse of uh, radical 3 over 2. What's that? It's positive, so it must be in quadrant 1. Sine what in quadrant 1 is radical 3 over 2? Pi over 3. Pi over 3. Okay. Now then, if I ask instead, what is sine inverse of negative radical 3 over 2, that will be? Negative pi over 3. 
negative pi over three, that's right. Okay, now that's for sine, that's for sine. So uh, I have to say for now, you need to get used to it. Okay, you need to get used to it. You need to keep in mind that the restriction for sine and sine inverse in sense of interest function has to be from negative pi over two to pi over two, which I usually call for quadrant one and quadrant one and quadrant negative one. So uh, somebody asked me that question yesterday, Thomas, why do you keep on calling quadrant negative one as quadrant four? Because our textbook in my, in our trigonometry textbook at West LA College called it quadrant four. Why do you have to make it into quadrant negative one? What's your purpose, Thomas? I say my purpose is actually so that you see that uh, the angle is basically negative of whatever angle you have in quadrant one. You see, because it is incorrect for you to say, it is incorrect for us to say, this is quadrant five, uh, this is five pi over three. No, that's not right. Okay, even though I know they are coterminal. But when you use your calculator, for example, your calculator will not give you this, your calculator will give you this one. Why? Because the calculator follow the domain, the restriction very, very closely, okay? Uh, the, the thing is, uh, of course, the, the students who ask me that question is uh, one of my best students there. Okay, so when she when he asked that question, it's not that she try, he tried to challenge me. No, uh, it's just like, Thomas, why, why do you keep on calling that quadrant negative one? Why don't you just follow the book? Okay, but that's an honest question. When I answer him that way, then he say, no wonder the textbook always give us negative angle instead of five pi over three in this case, you know? Okay, so uh, so one thing that he then realized is something I already went over in class. Uh, of course, that's what I'm going over with you is what happens if you have negative inside that sine inverse. Then you can pull it out. Okay, you can pull it out because sine function and therefore sine inverse function using the restriction that you give us uh, make sine inverse still an odd function. Now that's for sine inverse. Let's go on to tangent. Now, y part B, so that's part A. Now this is part B, Y equals to tangent inverse. Now tangent X is also not one-to-one -one function. Let me get the graph of tangent, give me a second. Now, this is the graph of tangent x. This is the graph of tangent x. <clears throat> now, again, it's not one-to-one -one function because if you pull a line, horizontal line, it will hit the graph at least in more than one spot, right? It hits the graph at more than one spot. So it's not a one-to-one -one function. What we will do is uh, we use the same trick, okay? We will restrict the domain such that tangent x becomes a one-to-one -one function in that domain. And the restriction happens to be 
the same restriction with uh, the sign function. Okay, so the restriction will be from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. From negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Okay, the restriction. Okay, so basically, uh, since y equals to tangent x is not one to one, by convention, by convention, y equals the domain of the domain of y equals to tangent x is restricted to negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. <clears throat> okay. So very, very similar. The only slight difference is on the endpoints. For sine inverse, you include negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. For tangent, you don't include the endpoints. Okay? Maybe I say it this way. Maybe I say it this way. Okay. If I go back to this uh, sine inverse, now sine inverse of 1 is pi over 2. Sine inverse of negative 1 is negative pi over 2. Okay, now while, uh, in other words, there is a value of x such that sine inverse of that value give you pi over 2. However, for tangent, as you can see, uh, we get undefined at pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. It's undefined here. It's undefined here. Right? Uh, in other words, uh, there is, there is, when we define, uh, so uh, y equals to tangent inverse x has range negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 in the sense that there is no value of x. There is no value of x that will give us this answer. There is no x such that tangent inverse of x equals pi over 2. Okay, why? Because the range is not including the endpoints. Okay, that's actually the only difference. That's actually the only difference with the sign inverse. But everything else the same. So let's say, for example, let's say, for example, Uh, how about tangent inverse of radical 3? Just like before, tangent theta equals to radical 3, theta is pi over 3, or 4 pi over 3. Now, the thing is, you need to fit that into this interval. What happened with my... Okay. Uh, you have to fit that into the interval from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Okay. So you see that this guy does not go in. Right? So the answer is pi over 3. Again, that's the same idea to what we learned for sine inverse. Okay, in fact, because tangent inverse is an odd function and the choice of the restriction uh, preserves that, then if therefore I ask what is tangent inverse of negative radical 3, the answer will be 
negative pi over 3. For cosine, on the other hand, part C, Y equals to cosine inverse X. Unfortunately, for cosine, uh, the, the graph is different. The graph is different. The graph of cosine is uh, something looks like this. I believe they try to get the same domain restriction. They try to get the same restriction. But when they try to make the same restriction, even between negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, it's still not 1 to 1. Okay? It's not 1 to 1. So. Uh, they change the restriction. They say, no, 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 no. Then we cannot use this restriction. Uh, quadrant negative one to quadrant one will still don't make it one to one. Then they say, oh, you know what? We restrict it this way from zero to pi. Okay. So they do the, re they make the restriction between zero radian to pi radian. Now you see that in this interval here, quadrant one and quadrant two, in quadrant one and quadrant two, uh, cosine function is one to one, okay? So here's the thing then, uh, by convention, by convention, y equals to cosine x uh, the domain of y the domain of y equals to cosine x is restricted to from 0 to pi okay uh, you can say that's quadrant one and quadrant negative four, uh, quadrant two to so make it one to one. Consequently, that restricted domain becomes the range of the inverse. 0 to pi is the range of y equals to cosine inverse x. Okay, now with that mindset, for example, what is cosine inverse of one half? Cosine what equals to one half? It's either in quadrant one or quadrant four, right? But this guy is not in, this guy not in quadrant one, not in quadrant two. So we cannot use that one. We will use pi over three. <clears throat> Okay. Now, what happens if the angle is negative? How about, uh, I'm sorry, what happens if the value is negative? Cosine inverse of negative one half. 
equals to 1. Then you ask yourself, cosine 1 equals to negative 1 half. Either it is in quadrant 2 or quadrant 3. Uh, you will see that we will not use this one because it is not in quadrant one, not in quadrant two. So I use two pi over three. So for sign for a negative angle, we use the basic identity of making it negative sign, but for cosine, we don't use basic identity because cosine of a negative angle is positive, right? That's correct. So so the restriction is not with the quadrant negative one. We don't have restriction here. Okay. See? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I can still show you some uh, shortcut, necessary shortcut. What we know is the following. What we know, this guy, this guy here, what is the reference angle? The reference angle is the reference angle is pi over three, but in quadrant two. Right? So we can actually do that problem in the following way. So we can do it this way, cosine, cosine, what happened to my thing? Cosine inverse of negative one half. Uh, the reference angle is pi over three, but you make it in quadrant two. You see that? In general, we can say cosine inverse of negative x is equals to pi minus cosine inverse of x. You can say so. Okay, it may be helpful, maybe helpful. Maybe helpful. Because we tend to just memorize cosine inverse of a positive number instead of a negative number. Okay, <clears throat> now let me ask you to do some problem from our textbook uh, to make you get used to those uh, problems. For example, I would like you to do, call this example one. I would like you to do uh, number two. Number two, part A. Sine inverse of negative one half. Part B, cosine inverse of negative radical two over two. Tangent inverse of negative one. So all negative numbers. And how about number four? Number four, A, arc sine. Now arc sine is actually the same to sine inverse. Okay, so the word arc here refers to the inverse sine. Okay, even though uh, 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 terminology wise, it's not, it's not. Uh, that's not what uh, it means. But you can say that this is the old notation for the sine inverse, the inverse So part B, what is R cos? Of negative one and then how about R tangent of zero. Okay. 
Now, together with this, let me give ourselves some break. We come back at 11.05. For your test three. Now, since I give the same test to my West LA College students, so I just give you the same solution. However, I think there's a one difference between your test and uh, the one I gave at West LA College uh, for your number nine. Uh, your number nine is graphing, their number nine is proofing. Okay. Uh, uh, but I give them whatever the solution I, ha I have for them. Okay. But anyway, let me continue. Mm, number 2a, this is negative of sine inverse one half, which is negative pi over six about this guy. This is pi minus the reference angle is pi over four. Oh, so that's three pi over four, quadrant two, right? And tangent inverse of negative one is negative pi over four. Now how about sine inverse of zero? Zero. How about arc cosine of negative one? Now, if you don't know, this is what you can do. Pi minus cosine inverse of one. Now, what is cosine inverse of one? Zero. Zero. So the answer here is pi. And you think about it, yeah, cosine pi is negative one, duh, right? Some, sometimes uh, because we don't get used to it, we still kind of like treading the water, right? So uh, when I remember when I first learned it too, it's like I, I, uh, I look at this, I don't know what to do. So I kind of like do it a long way. And don't worry, don't worry about that. Uh, as long as you are still in learning stage, it's okay for you to explore different ways to achieve the, the answer, okay? So if you get this pie right away by just looking at that, you are good. But if you do it long way, like what I just did, uh, don't get discouraged, you know, okay? Because that's, that's okay. We still try to get used to the notation and the mindset, okay? The mindset of what? That uh, sine inverse and tangent inverse have that negative pi over two to pi over two, okay? Or with parentheses while cosine inverse has that uh, from zero to pi. We still get used to it, okay? I don't expect it to be uh, super good right away on the first day of, uh, the first time you see this though, in the first one hour. No, I don't think so. That's too much to ex uh, expect. Now, how about arc tangent of zero? Cosine, I'm sorry, this is tangent. Tangent what they call zero? It's still zero, okay? Now, I would like to do more problems though. Uh, I think I will do three or four more problems from here. Mm -hmm. And then, <clears throat> and then uh, we get to the type of question you should expect for pre-calculus level. Okay, but for now, we kind of like warming up first. Uh, number 6a, what is sine inverse of pi over 2? Oh, this is, you may say this is a tricky question, but it's more about conceptual question. This is not, this is not the same to sine of pi over 2. Sine pi over two is one. Okay. Now this question is basically sine of what angle equals to pi over two. But if you know pi is three point one four divided by two is more than one, right? So there is no such no such theta. Is it right? In other words, in other words, the domain of this sine inverse is not between negative one to one. So of course, this is equal to undefined. Okay, now 
likewise with that, uh, likewise with that uh, arc cosine of pi over three. Uh, that pi over three, uh, we may think of that as radian. Well, it is in, it, it, it may be in radian, that's fine. But the question is not what is cosine pi over three, which is one half. Okay, no, this is cosine what angle equals to pi over three. But again, because this is greater than one, it's outside the range of the cosine. Okay, in other words, pi over three is not in the domain of our cosine. Yeah, of course, automatically, the output will be undefined. <clears throat> okay. Now, I go on further. It gets more complicated. Let's take a look on number eight. I will do, I think, only two problems from here. Number eight, uh, for number eight, uh, how about part A, sine of sine inverse of two thirds. You will learn something new here, but this something new is something you will do later. Okay, uh, this is, we are very close to pre level. Notice that sine inverse two thirds will give you an angle, right? This will give you an angle. Let's call that angle theta. Okay, so I will call that angle theta. Let theta be sine inverse two thirds. So sine theta will be you undo the inverse, sine theta is two thirds, is it right? Sine theta is two thirds. But we unintentionally already answer the question because this theta is sine inverse. This theta here, this theta here is sine inverse of two thirds. So sine of sine inverse of two thirds is is two thirds. Okay, notice that this theta here. Is this now, I hope you can follow me I hope you can follow me I know it sounds like a really uh, so Thomas why don't we just cancel this can we just cancel this well you can say so but uh, that type of question will be way too easy right Okay, let me modify the question. Let me modify the question. Modify. We change that to be, let's say, uh, how about cosine of sine inverse of two thirds. Now, no, uh, you cannot cancel that anymore, right? Okay, so if you stick with that method, that oh, Thomas, can I just cancel it? and I don't follow your method, fine, but I, I change it to cosine, and you ask me, Thomas, what can I do? And I will say, just cancel it. That's how you learned it before, right? No, that's a sarcastic joke. <laughs> no, no, that's a sarcastic No, 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 because your method earlier to do canceling only applies if you happen to have sine of sine inverse. <coughs> Okay, but what if we have cosine of sine inverse, which they are not inverse to each other? Then something more to be done, right? Okay, uh, the, but the technique will be similar. The starting point will be let theta equals to sine inverse of two thirds. 
So by definition, sine theta equals to two thirds. Now I want to find the cosine theta. Now for that, I will draw the triangle. For that, I will draw the triangle with angle theta. We did this, uh, we did this uh, routine before. If this is theta, the sine is two over three, right? So what is the, the adjacent? One, right? Oh, no, one. Square root of three squared minus two squared. That's square root of five. Pythagorean tip, right? Okay, now then what we need is actually the cosine of that theta. What we need is cosine of that theta. Cosine of that theta, when you read that triangle, you get square root of five over three. Now notice that we already answered that question. We already answered that question because that theta is sine inverse of two thirds, right? So if I summarize cosine of sine inverse of two thirds is radical five over three. So I call that theta first so that I can get the triangle. And then from that triangle, I get the cosine or whatever that is. It doesn't have to be cosine. Though. I can make it tangent. I can make it cosecant. I can make it secant. And the procedure will be will still be the same. Okay. <clears throat> Now, how about part B? Part B, cosine of cosine inverse of negative one fifth. Okay, you try that. Now, once you're done, I want you to, I want to modify I want to modify to, uh, let's say I do sine, sine of cosine inverse of negative one fifth. Maybe two minutes. Do part, the, do the first one first, uh, the, the one I don't modify. I will call this now. I will call that. I will call this theta. Okay. So let theta be cosine inverse of negative one fifth. Cosine theta, therefore, negative one fifth. Right. And oh, you know what? Yes. Uh, is there any theta that gives you negative one fifth? Yes. Uh, negative one fifth is in the uh, range of cosine, and therefore I can go back and cosine of cosine inverse of negative one fifth, which is my theta. Right. That's my theta. That's my theta. Therefore, is negative one fifth. Okay. Now the problem is the problem is what happens if I have sine. So, so from here, let me just go on. From here, cosine theta is negative one fifth. It means theta is in quadrant quadrant two, right? Remember that. Let me do the theta hat first, cosine theta hat, the reference angle. 
that's how I get the positive part and therefore able to do oops, able to do the right triangle. This is one, this is five, square root of 24 here, which is two square root of six. <clears throat> Okay, so sine theta hat is two radical six over five. Uh, don't forget theta is in quadrant two and in quadrant two sine is still positive. Right? Let me emphasize theta is in quadrant two. So it's still positive, the same number so the, the reason I use the right triangle is to get the number here, just to get the number. Okay, and then when I consider the, the quadrant, that's to get the sign, the plus minus. Okay, that's the reason. Now, uh, so with this said, uh, I can look back and answer the question sign of cosine inverse of negative one fifth is two square root of six over five. Okay, now I want you again to make uh, to make you aware that the technique I show you here, the technique I show you here is something I have done before. Okay, we did that before. In fact, a couple of many times, many times. Okay, now so the reason I taught you that way at that time because I know this is the technique that we keep on using, keep on using, keep on using. I use right triangle approach uh, and reference angle uh, to play with them. Okay, now let's change the question even further. Suppose I go this way. Your this is pretty much your precalculus level. Suppose I give you this, uh, compute or find tangent of cosine inverse x. In terms of x. Let x be an x be positive number so instead of giving you a particular question particular value specific value for that x i make a general x so the first thing i will do i call this my theta okay so let theta equals to cosine inverse of x, cosine theta equals to x. Now notice that because x is positive, since x is positive, then theta is in which quadrant? Uh, to be more or, precise, quadrant one. Quadrant one. If if x is negative, if x is negative, then theta is in quadrant two. From the definition of cosine inverse x, right? Okay. Now then, from here, well, because x already positive, then I can go ahead drawing the right triangle. cosine uh, theta equals to x or so if this is theta uh, then cosine is x over one so this guy here will be square root of 
1 minus x square by Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so uh, what is tangent of that? Tangent theta will be square root of 1 minus x squared over x. <clears throat> So, in conclusion, the tangent of cosine inverse of x equals to square root of 1 minus x squared over x. Now let me have fun a little bit here. I will just continue, I will just continue. So what can we say? So suppose from here, okay? So uh, what is tangent of two cosine inverse of x? In terms of x, when x is positive. Now, notice that we have called this our theta. We have called this our theta, right? That's our theta. Okay, so answering this question is the same to answer what is tangent to theta, right? Now, tangent to theta, I just continue, that will be 2 tangent theta over 1 minus tangent square theta. Okay, which is equal to, which is equal to two times square root of one minus x squared over x, big over one minus the square of the tangent, one minus x squared over x squared and multiply by LCD x squared to clean up and I will get 2x square root of 1 minus x squared on the top and the bottom I will get x squared minus 1 minus x squared. That will be 2x square root of 1 minus x squared over 2x squared minus 1. Okay, your turn, your turn. Uh, at first, the following question may look quite hard. At first, the following question may look quite hard, but uh, I hope then uh, you know how to kind of like uh, analyze this, okay? Find the value of, let's say, uh, tangent of, one half cosine inverse, or oh, I have cosine inverse earlier, make it sine inverse now, of sine inverse of x. <clears throat> now, let me guide you. First, you call that sine inverse of x, as theta. Okay, now assume that x is positive now and then draw the triangle. Okay, and then uh, basically you will see you need to solve, you need to express tangent theta over 2. Okay, and then use one of the half angle formulas 
I think the one that is good is one minus cosine theta over sine theta. Okay, now the value for cosine theta and sine theta can be obtained from the triangle you get from part two. Okay, now of course this formula is done by memorization. And of course, after that you simplify. Okay, one, 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 one. Let me give you four minutes from now. Okay, uh, what we have, so we let theta be sine inverse x and sine theta equals to x. I get the triangle. From that triangle, I get cosine theta. Now then the, uh, the question we need to answer is, actually tangent of theta over 2 which according to the formula is 1 minus cosine theta over sine theta now, but uh, nice thing is we already have both of them right so this is 1 minus square root of 1 minus x squared over sine theta is x i think i will just stop there <clears throat> it's already the denominator already rationalized and I don't think I can simplify the numerator okay so tangent of one half of uh, sine inverse x equals to one minus square root of y minus x squared over x <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> uh, now, last question. Last question. I was planning to do 7.1, but uh, because of the time, I don't think I can go that far. So, uh, let me do one last question. One last question. That is similar to my style. Let's say I want this. Uh, simplify or express in terms of x mm, cosine of cosine of tangent inverse of 2. minus uh, cosecant inverse of let's say three thomas i never see this uh no trust me the question you see in your test uh, you never see before okay should I do uh, well then we call angles uh, let's call this angle let me call that angle a okay and then this one here is angle B so what we need to do what we need to solve is actually I need to compute cosine of a minus B that's what I need to compute okay now you will see that we, we will spend more time in setting up and trust me, the further you go in math, that's what will happen. Okay, you actually spend more time in setting it up correctly. So let A be tangent inverse of 2 and B be cosecant inverse of 3. Now tangent A is 2, therefore I get the triangle triangle as the following let's say this is angle a tangent of a is 2 over 1 so this is 2 this is 1 this is square root of 5 it is so not drawn to scale though <clears throat> 
and b is cosecant inverse of 3 so cosecant b is 3 therefore sine b is one third right sine b is one third let's draw the triangle It's one third if this is B. So by Pythagorean theorem, this is square root of eight, which is two square root of two. <coughs> so that's the setup. Then we can go to cosine A minus B. That's what we need to answer. Okay, because this is my A, this is my A, this is my B. Okay. Now then, this according to formula, we know that cosine A minus B is cosine A cosine B minus sine A sine B. Now, I believe you can just take it from here, right? It's just plucking numbers. Just plucking numbers. You already have the triangles. Let's see. Cosine A is 1 over square root of 5. Cosine B is 2 radical 2 over 3 minus sine A is 2 over square root of 5, while sine B is uh, 1 third. Hey, Thomas. Yes. Mm -hmm. Isn't cosine A minus B, cosine A, cosine B? Oh, uh, yeah. Thank plus you. Plus. It's plus. Sine thank, sine you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So that will be 2 radical 2 over 3 radical 5 plus 2 over 3 radical 5. Put them together, that will be 2 radical 2 plus 2 over 3 radical 5. Rationalize the denominator. So we get. 2 radical 10 plus 2 radical 5 over 15. Okay, now that's for this section. I actually answer uh, a lot of questions already from here unintentionally though. Suggested homework from this 6.6 .6 will be uh, number one to number 33. Maybe I say that from number one to number 13, do every other odd. And then starting from number 15 to number 33, do the odd ones. Okay. <clears throat> So that's your suggested homework. Monday, we don't have class. And I don't want, of course, I don't want to go online also. Uh, that's our day off, right? Okay. But if you have a chance between now and then, uh, I would like you to, let me tell you what I will do first. On Wednesday, next week. So on uh, May the 27th, on May the 27th, give me a second, I get it checked. Uh, when is test four and final? Uh, test four. Test four will be on June the eighth, and your final will be on June the fifteenth. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, uh, on for your final, your final will be from 8 o'clock, however, from 8 to 11 a.m. Okay, I will release the te I will release the test like 15 minutes earlier. Okay, let's say I will release the test at 7.45. And then I give you up to 11.15 to be fully uploaded. Okay, yeah, uh, that's my plan. 
Now the thing is, the thing is, uh, that happens to be also the first day of summer at West LA College. So uh, if you have questions, I may not be able to answer it uh, right away. I mean, I don't expect you to have any question during the final though, but just in case like I happen to have some typo and so on and so forth, uh, please uh, understand that I may not take a look on my phone because I will be teaching during that time. Okay, well anyway, uh, here's what I plan to do on May the 27th next week. That's Wednesday. It's Wednesday. I plan to do, I plan to do 7.1, 7.2, and uh, I'm not sure if I can go that far, and 9.1, okay? And then the Monday after that, so plus five, that will be June the 1st, the Monday after that, I will do 9.2, 9 9.3, 9.4, 9.5, 9.2, 9.3, 9.5. And the Wednesday, the third, in case any leftover, in case any leftover. Now, there's a chance that I may not be able to do this. There's a chance that this guy is the one going here, and 9.1 is the one going here. Okay, but here's the thing though. All this material, all this material, at least, at least uh, 7.1, 7.2 will be the material I already teach in my trigonometry class. And in fact, I would, uh, with them, I teach in a lot more detail. So I really, really want you, please, 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 please watch the Math 241, okay, lecture video, videos. Now for them, it will be section 7.1 to 7.3. I think I taught them 7.1 somewhere in one of the day, and then 7.2, 7.3 on another day. Now, let me show you what will that be in uh, on my YouTube, because I myself not sure where I precisely well, which one. So you go to YouTube. And go to my channel. So let's just type Thomas in there. Or Juno. And then go to playlist. Are you following me so far? Well, then you go to Math 241. Now 7.1 is here. This is 7.1, 7.2, Okay. In fact, our seven, our our textbook 7.1, 7.2, our textbook 7.1, 7.2 covers their 7.1, 7.2, 7.3, 7.4. Okay. So when you let's say you watch this one here, 7.1. Uh, uh, this is a combined 6.4 and 7.1. Okay, so you kind of like go a bit. Uh, what am I doing? Uh, this is already so. So let's say minute 51, approximately, approximately minute 51, 49, minute 49 uh, for that, 
Now, by the way, by the way, let me go back. Uh, by the way, I, I hope you are aware that uh, I don't cover some material in your textbook because of the time. I don't cover, there are some sections I don't cover. Uh, for example, 7 point, Uh, for example, 7.4, 7.5. No, no, no. 7.5, 7. Some section I don't cover. Yeah, so I I don't cover 7.5 and 7.6 because in my opinion you will not see this in your calculus anyway but if you go to differential equation you will need it so if you have a chance I covered I did going over this in my math 241 Uh, in fact, it's in their chapter eight. Okay, and there's another one parametric equation that I don't cover, but I went over with them. Where's that? Oh, actually, uh, our ten point. Four to ten point six. I also don't cover that. It's supposed to be part of our curriculum, but you can search through my trigonometry class. Okay. Now, according to our curriculum, I supposed to cover ten point one to ten point three, but uh, the thing is, I don't see it anywhere in Calc one, Calc two, Calc three, differential equation, uh, and much later. Of course, you can watch this from my watch uh, online video if you want to uh, learn more okay but it w i won't i won't cover that and therefore it won't be in my test okay uh, what else that you supposed to know about here actually partial fraction decomposition 8.10 but again you can watch online go to youtube and learn it yourself okay in my opinion uh, you can learn this much later. Actually, uh, you can learn that during the summer break, after your summer or after your winter, after your fall, you're still okay. Okay, but please do me this big favor. I want you to watch this from my 241. Please, please, please. Okay, yeah. So uh, then on Wednesday, when we come back, uh, I will just spend not too much time on 7.1, 7.2 then I can cover 9.1. Okay, yeah, that's for today. See you then next week.